Hello everyone, welcome to Comsol Multiphysics training course. In this course, I will teach you how to use the Comsol Multiphysics software from the beginning level to the advanced level. In the first lecture, I will introduce you the software, the features and applications, then we move to the environment of the software and see what's going on over there. So let's begin. Okay, so what is Comsol? Comsol is a powerful software to solve multiphysics problem in one single simulation. When I say multiphysics, it doesn't have to be multiphysics. It can definitely model a single physics in the simulation, but basically we want to use the powerful feature of the software to combine physics in one problem. Let me give you one example. So imagine you want to model a pressure sensor which is basically you apply a pressure and you get some electric signal. So it's basically a combination of solid mechanics and electricity. We can model such problems in the console software. Interesting, right? Okay, the software is based on finite element analysis. If you're familiar with engineering concepts, you may know what FEA is, or you can find more information on the internet. Just search finite element analysis and you will see what the concept is. Comsol has been used for many different practical physics and solving interesting problems from heat transfer to optics or so. I'll give you more information and more examples in this course. Okay, so what are the features of Comsol? Comsol has a relatively fast calculation time you may know that the calculation time could be very long for many problems. So having a fast calculation time is very important for us. The other important feature of console is that it can be linked to many other software packages such as AutoCAD, SOLIDWORKS, Excel, and MATLAB. So basically you can import from those software packages into the console or some of the results of console would be exported to those software packages, which is very interesting and useful. The other feature of the console is the libraries. Console has provided very comprehensive libraries, such as material properties, model properties that you can use to simplify your problem, and you don't have to find those information from other places. Last but not least, the representation. You can basically get very interesting results out of your simulation like videos, images, graphs, curves, and diagrams. Here is some of the applications of the console software from fluid mechanics, electromagnetics, heat transfer or so. So in addition to multi-physics solving, one thing that is very important is the application builder. The application builder is used to have a standalone application for your problem so you can make the application and then use it for your problem it's like having an application on your phone but for your own problem and every time you can only change the variables and you don't have to make your model from the scratch i will discuss it later on okay let's stop talking and get into the software environment and see how it works okay so if you open the software you face this page. So as you see, when we want to start a new model, we have two options, model wizard and blank model. The blank model means nothing is in there and you have to start everything from scratch. But in model wizard, you can use the libraries available. There are other options here that I will discuss step by step. In many problems, you use model wizard. So let's start with this. If we click on it, we need to select the space dimension. As you see, we have different options from zero dimension to 3D dimension. It is very important to simplify the problem because you don't want to have a very long calculation time. So if you have some symmetry in the system, you can use a low dimensional problem. For example, if a geometry is uniform in one dimension, you can use the 2D model. Or if you are dealing with structures like a cylinder, you can use 2D axisymmetric model. But generally speaking, the 
the 3D model is the most complicated and detailed modeling. So we try to not touch this, but in many problems we have to model it in the 3D. Okay, for simplicity, let me start with the 2D model. Now it's the interesting part, the model library and selecting interfaces and physics. So forget about these three, four physics that I used before and let's see what we have here. So as you see, we have different interfaces, the ACDC interface and we have a drop down menu. If I open it, you can see different modules, electric field and electric current magnetic field, no current, and so on. So let's open one of them and see what is going on in here. So say for example, for electric fields and currents, we have three options, electrostatics, electrostatics boundary elements, and electric current. If I click on one of them, you can, I can get very useful information about it and what the governing equation of the system is. As you see, this interface solves Gauss law. So if you are dealing with this problem, you can use electrostatics. Let's try another one. Say for example, electric current. This interface or say module uses Ohm's law so that we can use it for electric problems that deal with Ohm's law. So let's get out of the electricity and get something in mechanical engineering. I will move to structural mechanics. I click on it and then I open the drop down menu. And as you see, we have so many options. We can model plates, beam, truss. We have multi body dynamics. We have even some more specified features like pipe mechanics or so and we have many other options in here we have thermal stress we have thermoelasticity electromechanics or so but don't worry we are going to use it later on for our own physics so we don't have to use all of them and we don't need to learn how to use all of them we just need to use the one that matches our physics okay so let's start with a single physics problem instead of touching multi-physics and see what is going on in the software environment. I'm gonna use AC-DC module, electrostatics, and go forward. Like I said, don't worry, we are not gonna solve any problem today. We will do it later on in next lectures. So I click on electrostatics and then add, and just wait a moment. There we go. We have electrostatics and we have the dependent variable which means that the system solves for electric potential. Okay, let's go forward. I click on study and then we have different types of studies. We can have a frequency domain study, stationary study, time dependent or so. It means that we can have different studies. I click on stationary model because it's simpler than the others and I move forward. So when I clicked on it, it appears here and then done. That's it. Bear with the software for a few seconds and then we'll see what's going on over here. Okay, so this is the actual window that we make our model and we solve for the problem. But I'm not going to touch it today because I don't want to make it more complicated for the first lecture. But in the next lecture, I will solve a simple problem and I show you how to use many of these items and menus. So stay tuned for the next video.